Setting up a rapid trigger keyboard can be a bit tricky. If you set the sensitivity too high, you run the risk of accidental inputs that can disrupt your gameplay. On the other hand, setting it too low won't give you any real benefits over a traditional mechanical keyboard. That's why in today's video we'll take a look at the best settings for actuation, rapid trigger and SOCD, as well as some best practices when setting up your keyboard for the first time. Before we start, I just want to highlight that these settings are what work best for me. I'll give you some guidelines on what I think are good setting ranges, but as with anything custom, the best approach is to experiment and find your own sweet spot. I'll be using one of the more common apps to show example settings, which is the QMK web app. Some of the fields you see here may be located elsewhere for your specific keyboard and some options might not be available at all on certain models. If you want to be absolutely sure your keyboard supports features like SOCD or SnapTap, an alternative name for the same thing, check your keyboard's manual or contact support. All right, after this really long intro, let's jump right in. Let's start with some pre-work. I strongly recommend doing two things before changing rapid trigger actuation settings, updating the firmware and running calibration. Updating the firmware ensures you're running the latest version, which often fixes common issues, glitches and improves overall stability. Many apps will show a pop-up asking you to update when you launch them, but if not, just go to the general settings and look for firmware updates. Once the firmware update is complete, go to the keyboard settings and look for travel calibration. This allows your keyboard to track the minimum and maximum magnetic field values, helping to reduce glitches and improve accuracy. The setup is very simple and usually requires you to firmly press all keys until they bottom out. Just make sure you really bottom them out to avoid issues later. Now that we've covered that, let's move on to the settings. The typical actuation range I recommend is between 0.5 and 1 mm. This depends mainly on two things, how often you type on your keyboard and how much force the switch is required to activate. If you type a lot, I recommend staying closer to the higher end of the range around 0.8 to 1 mm as this results in fewer typos and better typing experience. The same applies to very light switches. If your keys require minimal force, it's best to set the actuation point closer to 0.8 1 mm. This helps reduce false inputs caused by resting your fingers on the keys or accidentally brushing nearby keys. In most other scenarios, feel free to use a range between 0.5 to 0.8 mm. The lower the value, the faster and more responsive the key will feel. Of course, there are specific games like also that can benefit from more aggressive settings, but for most cases, the ranges mentioned here will work very well. Next up is Rapid Trigger. If your keyboard supports it, and most modern ones do, I recommend enabling Continuous Rapid Trigger. This allows the feature to work consistently without needing the key to reset. In other words, Rapid Trigger remains active regardless of the actuation or reset point. Next, you'll need to decide whether to use separate press and release values for Rapid Trigger. In most cases, I recommend using the same value for both to maintain consistency. However, it can be useful to set a slightly higher value for release if you notice keys deactivating unintentionally. This works similarly to a dead zone. In general, a rapid trigger range of around 0.15 to 0.25 mm is the sweet spot for most users. Some well calibrated keyboards can go as low as 0.1 mm. I encourage you to try it and if you experience accidental activations or deactivations, simply increase the value. Personally, I use the same values for both press and release, but if you run into issues, don't be afraid to experiment. I also want to address the elephant in the room, ultra fine precision settings like 0.01 mm. While these look great in marketing materials, they're impractical in real-world use and unnecessary for fine-tuning. For reference, 0.1 mm is roughly the distance you're seeing right now on the screen. The last setting worth discussing is SOCD, also known as SnapTap. If you're not familiar with it, this feature allows the keyboard to register the last pressed key or the most dominant input depending on the option, rather than cancelling movement when two opposing keys are pressed. Some keyboards let you choose between different behaviors. I generally stick with the last pressed option, which works extremely well for strafing in FPS games. This way, when I want to change direction, I don't need to release the opposite key first. As soon as I press, for example, A, I immediately start moving left. There's not much setup involved, just choose two opposing keys and you're done. In the QMK app, the process can be a bit confusing at first. You select one pair of keys, apply the changes, and then you can assign another pair. The UI may look like you can only configure one pair, but that's not the case as shown in the key preview. And that's pretty much it. One final tip is to experiment with pair key settings. Many keyboards now support pair key actuation and rapid trigger values, which is great for fine tuning your setup. For example, 
You can use lighter settings for movement and action keys while keeping heavier settings for others, which also improves typing. You can also take advantage of multiple profiles if your keyboard supports them. I hope this video was helpful. As always, please make sure to subscribe if you want to support the channel. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.